kitten. No, 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 no. What won't you love me? Kit, no, no, come back. No, I want to be friends. No, will you train with me? Hi there, welcome back to another episode of This Old Range. I'm gonna show you how to own noobs. So today we're going to be going over kind of the fundamentals of what you need to be a decent player, uh, which is how to hold a rifle and basically barricade cover. And then I'm going to be going over why those things are important. And there's not really a wrong way to do it, but there's ways to enhance efficiency. Let's play. First we're going to talk about holding a rifle and kind of what your elbows are doing. Right now I'm using a Crytek CRB Alpha which is about a 9 or a 10 inch handguard. So right now with the stock collapsed my elbow is a fair bend in it. Once I expand the stock, my arm is a little bit more straightened out and my elbow isn't as bent. As I collapse that stock in, my arm bends in because I bring the rifle closer to my body, which creates more of a bend in the elbow. Kids are goofy, so they don't understand that. That's why they do that. Here's the basic fundamental way to shoot a rifle, particularly how to operate the trigger. Notice my middle finger, ring finger, and my pinky are all under the trigger guard. And my trigger finger is my index finger. This is how you would shoot a rifle, normal, like a real rifle. This is how you would do the dang thing. If you look at the wrist and kind of how much pressure is on it, if you try and do this over time, most airsofters will tell you their hands and wrist gets really tired. So what most players are gonna do is release the grip, shift the hand up higher, relax the fingers that would be under the trigger guard, and use the middle finger instead of the index finger because it's a much more comfortable way to shoot an airsoft rifle. Not a real rifle, an airsoft rifle. And then we have the dreaded illegal feathering technique. With feathering, it's really just a matter of your hand having a seizure. Look at the way that the stock sits into my shoulder. This is how you would normally shoot a real rifle. Notice that my body is a little bit leaned forward and then I have more of the stock into my shoulder. Notice the position of the buffer tube where my shoulder is. And notice how far away that the stock is from my earlobe. This is more of a rifle shooting position because I'm gonna to have to use my body to compensate for the recoil of a real rifle. When viewed from more of a front angle, you'll notice that my elbow is a lot more relaxed. It's not all the way to the side and I'm not chicken winging it, but it's more relaxed and it's not pressed up against my body. This is where it's gonna start being a little bit more specific to how to shoot an AEG rifle. Notice where the bottom of the stock meets my roughly my clavicle bone or my collarbone. When I bring the rifle up, notice now how much higher the stock is on my body and how much closer the stock is to my earlobe. Notice the position of the buffer tube in relation to where it was on my shoulder last time. The rifle is sitting a lot higher. I seat my airsoft rifle a lot higher on my shoulder because I wear a die I-5 mask and I want to make sure that I'm still maintaining a good cheek well, more or less, and that I still have an overall good position and a good line of sight on my rifle. Now we compare it to how you would normally shoot a real rifle. Notice the stock is completely in my shoulder and my posture is a little bit farther forward because again, I have to compensate for recoil, so I adjust my body and my positioning as such. And again, final comparison, buffer tube is above the shoulder and it's also a little closer to my earlobe. I like to keep my rifle nice and high. Notice my posture has changed also. I'm much taller now. I'm not as far forward because again, there is no recoil to compensate for. I'll talk more about elbow positioning throughout this video. Notice that my right elbow is into my body. It's touching my hip at this point. It's not sticking out. It's not level. It's not relaxed. It's in and touching my body. I do this so I make sure that my elbow isn't used to give my position away. But this is not how you would shoot a real rifle. Sometimes I'll see kids and players use this technique where they keep the same hand placement, they just shift the rifle over. This is a sin against rifles. This is a sin against America and you should be locked up from jail for this. This is a lazy technique. It tells me that you don't know what you're doing and you don't feel like learning a more efficient technique. Let go of the trigger, switch your hands, switch the shoulder. Ta-da!
A great place to practice your barricade shooting on both sides is a doorway. Notice I have enough space to work on the right or the left side of this opening. Notice there's also a line in the cement. I can use that line as a reference point to make sure that my feet don't go over that line if my gun's not over it first. What I don't want to do is turn my back to a gunfight. It's a terrible idea. The other thing I also don't want to do is lead with my face. Those two things in conjunction will get you shot right in the grill. And if you've done this before, you deserve to be shot right in the face. Ah yes, the jump turn. Because that's efficient. The problem with most of these bad positions is you're presenting too much of a target for your opponent. When you're too close to cover, you're not giving yourself any room to work. Most players are going to try and mount their rifle to a barricade because they're usually too weak to hold it up with their own strength. The problem with this is it gives your position away to whoever's on your far right or your far left. What you want to try and never do is push any part of your rifle beyond where your cover is. So you're not sticking your rifle through windows or ports or any of that stuff. A quick way to get some adequate distance is to just put your gun against the wall and push off a little bit. And that should be about the minimum amount of space you need. Notice here in this position, I'm not too close to cover, I'm not too far from cover. My muzzle is about maybe six to eight inches away from the wall. This is a good place to work from. If we also look at the left side of my body or where the rifle is, I'm not sticking anything out. I am not doing anything that lets my opponents know where I'm at. When you're shooting from behind cover, really the only thing that you should be showing the opponent is your eyes and the end of your gun. That's it. Not an elbow, not a foot, not a piece of equipment, nothing. If you want to get better, if you want to play efficiently, this is how you do it. All I'm doing is bending my left knee and sticking my hips out to the right. I'm scooting my butt to the right. That's it. I'm not moving my feet. I'm not moving my legs. My feet stay planted and my heels are down. We'll go over that in a second. But I'm not doing anything that's going to give my position away before I'm ready to start shooting. I want to move as little of my body as possible because the more of my body that I move, the more of my body that can get shot. When we look at this position from the back, a couple of things I usually see players do inefficiently is they'll have one leg up, one leg down. This is going to throw you off balance, and if you're off balance, your shots are going to be off balance. Usually if one heel is off the ground, it's not as bad as if your foot is in the air, but generally what I see happen is if the player puts their heel up, they're usually going to get off balance on that foot anyway. So it's a good idea to try and keep your heels down. If you have to move so much to the point where your foot is coming off the ground, you either need to change positions or stop trying to have such a large sector of fire. This is why learning to shoot off of both shoulders is so important. The problem here is I have to put the rifle across my body. It's not the most efficient way to do it. My rifle is on my right side. The opening I'm trying to shoot through is on the left. So I have to bring that rifle across my body which is gonna kinda leave my left side exposed and broadcasting anything. And now my left arm is gonna be out before my rifle is, and that's bad because I can get either shot in the arm or someone can see that arm and then hide and move position because they know where I'm at. This is also important when you're starting to look at single man entries or if you're trying to do like a dirty clear on a room. In this position, I would have a more direct line of sight if the rifle is on my left side, not on my right side. Now it gets a little bit more advanced. Even with my rifle aligned on the doorway more efficiently, if I start moving in a regular straight line, what's gonna happen is that muzzle is probably gonna poke through the doorway and anyone in a deep corner is gonna be able to see my position. This is a little bit more inspired by the Israeli limited penetration style of CQB, this is a single man entry. Obviously pending the layout of the room, I can clear most of this space without even entering it because now instead of in a straight line, I am moving in an arc like a rainbow. A lot of times you're going to make patterns out of your movement, you're not even going to know it. When you do a reload from a standing position, most people go right back into the same space that their face left. A way to avoid this is to reload from a standing, drop to a kneeling, and then pop back out and return fire. You can do a kneeling position in one of three very basic ways. I usually do a double kneeling, unless you have to get up real fast, but if you plan on settling in this position for a few seconds, you can be in a double kneeling position. You can do a one up, one down. This position is gonna be a lot more familiar to your average rifle shooter, because what I'm doing is I'm using my left elbow, putting it into my knee or somewhere into my thigh, and I'm then using that leg for support of my position. So this is more of a supported kneeling position. The problem here is it gives my position away. See how far out my leg is? And also I can't get up as fast. It's a similar issue than the big wide step presents. If I have to get out of the way, I can get my body and my face out of the way, but my leg is still gonna be exposed.
is more of a non-supported kneeling because my legs aren't supporting my shooting position, this might just be a little bit more comfortable for some people. Caber, who the f*** are you, nerd?